Light, and I'm at the Corbin Studio and Art Gallery in Crisfield, Maryland. And this is Jennifer Merritt. She's going to explain to us some of the fascinating things that are going on in Crisfield today. Could you give us some information about how you've contributed to the arts and entertainment in Crisfield? Sure. Um, from 2016 through 2019, I worked in a grant-funded position. It was funded through the Department of Housing and Community Development. It's called the Circuit Rider, and it serves its purpose is to serve multiple small towns uh, with their administrative needs. And at the time, uh, in 2018, Kim Lawson was the mayor, and he is a big supporter of the arts and, and knows what they can do for the economy. And he uh, made it possible for the, the city to apply for an arts and entertainment district by allowing me to use some of my staff time to do that. The application was a long process. It was about a year. Mm. Uh, the application itself was about 200 pages. and a whole team of people contributed. Um, we had about 50 people uh, that contributed either technical material or came to community meetings um, and just helped out in every way they could because there was a lot of community support to see this designated by the state as an arts and entertainment district. Well, that's a beautiful thing. So then that got established. Can you give us some information about the um you know, about the whole, you did explain the process, but what is the, the purpose and the function of this? Arts and entertainment districts are designated by the Maryland State Arts Council through the Maryland Department of Commerce um, because they really are an economic tool. Uh, the economy tends to do better anywhere there, there's a lot of art. So um, to encourage artists and arts, um, venues and so on to come to an arts and entertainment district. The Department of Commerce and the state offer property tax incentives as well as, well there's three different types of tax incentives that are, that are offered to increase uh, economic activity in the area. The first one is a property tax incentive and that is um, if someone is developing a property specifically for an artistic venue or, or for an artist, there is a 100% tax uh, incentive both through the county and through the town on the increase in value. Mm. So say you bought a building for 50000 and you improve the tax uh, value of that building by another 50000 and now your your building's value is 100000 you would only be taxed on 50,000 of it. Oh, wow, that would be quite incentive for some it is artists a great and incentive. artistic businesses and artists. Mm -hmm. So this this district, it it starts next door over here at the Armory, doesn't it? It does start at the Armory and because the Armory is envisioned as an entertainment venue mm. as well as a, a space for community events. The Armory historically held many community events, held weddings and basketball games and all kinds of things, um, but it's also envisioned as a great place for concerts and stage plays and so on. It has a beautiful uh, two-story space inside with a hardwood floor and a stage and so on. So the, the Arts and Entertainment District goes from the Armory to the City Dock. Hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. It, yeah, so it goes all the way down, mm -hmm. So it, and it's, then it branches off. It branches off both towards the library and right. towards the marina. Right. Because those are both big venues for events in Crisfield. It's 96 acres, which is just about the maximum allowable space. Beautiful. So people need to check out the website and find out uh, where these properties are so they could contribute to the arts and maybe get some of those tax benefits. Yeah, so there's two more types of tax benefits. Mm -hmm. There's a tax benefit that's specific to artists, and that is called the Artist Income Tax Subtra Subtraction Modification. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, if an artist creates and sells their work in, a, in an arts entertainment district, mm -hmm. in any Maryland arts entertainment district, so they could create here and sell in Baltimore, mm -hmm. or vice versa, uh, they don't have to pay tax on that artwork that's sold. 
They don't have to pay tax on the income they receive from that art? Not state tax. They don't have to pay state tax um, on the income wow. they receive through the, the this art. Is, this is And they wonderful. can sell it by mail. They can mail it from the district anywhere as long as they created it in an arts entertainment district and mail it from an arts entertainment district. This is, this is wonderful for artists. No wonder we have so many artists around here. We have three art galleries, don't we? We do have three art We're galleries. We're sitting in one of them. We are? We're sitting in the Corbin Studio and Galleries. And this one was the library established by Lillian Stratton Corbin. Can so, you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. So uh, the library was actually established by um, Alfred Corbin, Lillian's husband, uh, to serve as a mausoleum for her. Mm. Uh, so Lillian was originally from Crisfield. She grew up in extreme poverty. She, she moved to New York and did very, very well as an actress. She became an actress, a philanthropist. She was highly successful. Uh, but she died tragically in a car accident, oh. I believe in 1928. Um, she and her niece both died in the, in the fire as a result of oh. a car accident. And her husband um, uh, created a mausoleum for her, which was unfortunately um, destroyed by grave robbers. And oh. then he wanted to do something to honor her mm -hmm. memory. and. She was also an author. She wrote four books. I read one of them called The Homing. Oh, good yes. Oh, that it was very so cool. enjoyable. Very much uh, a piece of the era. Yes. You know, it was really wonderful. And I'm on. I'm looking for other copies. In fact, if anyone has any copies of her, her fictional writing, I want it. I will buy it from you because it's something we should have here. Yes. We should absolutely. have it here. Absolutely. In honor of her. It should be here. So her husband um, built this library in her honor, and her ashes are, are here now. That's right. Yes. Um, this building was vacant for a while when the mm -hmm. new library in Crisfield was built. Mm -hmm. It was vacant for a time, and while it was vacant, uh, her ashes were kept at the local funeral home, mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to keep her respectfully. And when this building was reopened as an art gallery in May of 2019, it was opened with the uh, Hanging Out Art Show. Right. And just the, the day before the show, her ashes were brought back by funeral procession led by the mayor of the town at that time, oh, wow. who was very dies. Very formal. Yes, um, in, a, in a hearse uh, and uh, with a, a police escort. Mm. And it was really a a beautiful thing to have her returned here and um, as a, she was a, a woman that, that really uh, celebrated the arts so to have her returned here and celebrate the arts with us. Right, it adds honor to this building. Yes. And in fact this building is still a library to some extent. It is still yeah. a library, yes, and it, it houses have, arts books now. Yes, only <laughs> arts books, what about a thousand or something? And that's part of the the agreement for having this building. It's you know it has to be a library, and it is also an art studio, and also a gallery, exactly. and also a mausoleum. Exactly. What a building! What a building! So I want to tell you about the last arts and entertainment district tax incentive. Oh, okay. Um, Arts and entertainment venues, uh, say somebody opens a concert venue or something like that, do not have to pay the um, arts and amusement, or sorry, admissions and amusement tax for oh, Maryland. Wow. So that's a big incentive. That's a huge incentive. Yeah. yeah. That is great. There's so many opportunities. Yes. So we were describing the district, okay? And so we in this district, we have two other art galleries. Mm -hmm. One of them is 413. Yes. If gallery. So, gallery 413, mm -hmm. which is run by the nonprofit, the Crisfield Art Syndicate. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have done a beautiful job of taking that large space and converting it to an art gallery. Um, they celebrate a really diverse group of artists. I believe there's artists from all over the state and mm. maybe, maybe even all over the um, country. Wow. And it is um, just really gorgeously renovated in there. And there's also uh, the Main Street Gallery, which mm -hmm. is the Somerset County Arts Council's gallery. Mm -hmm. So the Somerset County Arts Council serves all of Somerset County. Um, 
but we're lucky to have that gallery here in town near the dock. Yeah, that's beautiful. And if you, we go into the various Facebook accounts, we see that there are classes at these various art galleries. There are plays, shows, it's so many opportunities, yeah. you know, yeah. and so that's a, a wonderful thing. So some people have been wondering about a, the difference between the district and the project. Could you that's a good question. Yes, yes absolutely. Um, so arts and entertainment districts are designated by the state and they're functions of cities. Um, the city has to either take responsibility for managing them or designate responsibility for managing them. So when the, art, when the city was in the process of applying for the Arts and Entertainment District, it realized it didn't have the capacity to manage this district. And there were, there were lots of people who still wanted to see it happen, and uh, they put together a nonprofit for that purpose, the Crisfield Arts and Entertainment District Project, which is a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, because managing an art district is a function of a city, that has to be agreed to each year uh, between the city and the nonprofit as part of the um, information that's provided to the Maryland State Arts Council each year. And it's also under a memorandum of understanding between the city and the Crisfield Arts and Entertainment District Project. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a very um, important relationship that allows the city to have an arts and entertainment district even without the uh, staffing capacity that right. we might need to manage it. <laughs> so the difference is administrative for the, and then the other thing is the location. The other thing is the place. Right. So everybody who lives here or works here or visits here is a part of the Crisfield Arts and Entertainment District, which like we said, that goes from the armory to the city dock and then from the marina to the, the new library. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is a place that everyone is, is a part of. And you know, we also have creativity over the airwaves. Absolutely. You know, our radio station, WBYC. It's 107.3. Yeah, yes. by the Somerset County Arts Council supports exactly. that. Exactly, yes. You know, so we've got it visual, we've got it place, we've got the administrative, we have we the, got the tax incentives. <laughs> We've got the airways. Yes. It's a beautiful situation. It really is a beautiful situation. <laughs> so before we end, can you tell us a little bit more about how this benefits artists? So the Corbin Studio and Gallery was founded as a place to give artists a place to benefit from the tax incentives that are available in an arts entertainment district. Um, an artist must, must both create and sell their work in the Arts and Entertainment District. So they may be creating their work at home, they might be um, doing plein air painting. Uh, they can create their work anywhere in the district, but the Corbin Studio and Gallery and the Artist Co-op gives them a place to sell that work and take advantage of the tax incentives. That is incredible. So they just need to contact us. Absolutely. Thank you so much for talking to us and explaining all this to us. Thank you for having yes. me. Oh, you're so welcome. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>